I remember well in the mid-1990s, we used to pride ourselves that we had the best private sector pension provision of any country in the Western world. It was, one of, it was one, of, you know, one of the great boasts of the country. And then Tony Blair got elected, Gordon Brown became the Chancellor, and they decided they would savage the private sector pension industry by putting a tax on dividends earned. And of course, what Gordon Brown didn't seem to understand, that it was actually the reinvestment of dividends into long-term pension savings plans, that was where the real growth in money over the years came, and he absolutely savaged it. Since that time, the pensions industry, which is a multi-trillion pound industry, since that time, it's become hidebound by a number of EU rules, and many in the industry have been saying, come on, let's open this sector up, let's allow pension funds to invest in infrastructure and much else. But into all of this wades the Shadow Chancellor, Rachel Reeves, this week. And she is saying that all of the pension providers should put 5% of the assets they have under their control and put it into a growth fund. Now, quite what would be in this growth fund, I mean, these clearly would be Rachel Reeves's tips for the top, businesses that she think we should invest in. Well, the lesson of this, of course, is clear. You can look at Scotland in particular, where, you know, whatever it is, whether it's a tram scheme, whether it's a ferry across to the islands, they turn into complete and utter disasters. And whether this would be on a voluntary basis or whether there'd be compulsion, I just don't know. But it looks to me like rather than opening up the rules for the pension funds and how they can invest their money, it's rather like a potential government dictator. One of the most outspoken voices on this has been Pension B CEO Romy Savova, who said it looks like the party wants to tap money intended for retirements to support the economy. Well, joining me is Rebecca O'Connor, who is Director of Public Affairs at Pension B. Rebecca, your boss, very outspoken uh, on this. Um, does it feel to you that potentially a Labour government might be telling you what you have to do with other people's money? I think you've hit the nail on the head. It is other people's money. And mm. because of that, we treat it very, very carefully. And we know that we, you know, we want the UK to thrive. We want to invest in British businesses. All of that is great in theory for our pension funds, which are long term investments. Um, and so in theory, you know, they, they should provide the patient capital for these kind of projects. But of course, in practice, what happens with this kind of growth fund? You know, some of the investments go wrong. And the risk as things stand with the kind of pensions that we have falls on you as the individual. And of course, you know, your retirement income is not something that you particularly want to play with. Um, it's valuable and, it, it, you know, it, it's our money ultimately. So I think very good that we're looking at how pensions can help, but mandating, um, that's another thing entirely. And Rachel Reeves apparently didn't actually rule out mandating uh, because she's relying on the goodwill of the pen pensions industry to, to do this. Um, but of course, it all has to be in the interests of us savers at the end of the day. And at the moment, it's not very clear how that will pan out. No, I mean, the argument will be from Labour, look, you know, we're just putting forward policy ideas at this moment in time. But I would guess that the historic relationship between the Labour Party and the private pension industry after what Brown did by taxing the dividends back in 97 must be bad. Uh, when she talked about this, was this the first time you in the industry had heard of this idea? No, it's, it's been doing the rounds for some time. And uh, ah. indeed, the Conservative Party has looked at it as an idea. And there has been talk of things like lifting the cap on investment charges to enable um, more investment in, in the kind of assets that would you know, produce this kind of growth. So it has been talked about for a while. And Labour sort of pinning uh, themselves to the mast, if you like, with this kind of, you know, pushing it a little further forward and saying we would push it further forward. Um, but yes, I mean, it is it's flagging policy ideas at this stage. Yes, we do need to see the detail on it. Um, and some transparency of where that money would actually go, because at the moment, it's just very broad, isn't it? It's the whole of the UK economy. But what are the type of projects and what kind of returns could we expect from them? Because that's what we want is Pension yeah. savers. We want to know that we're generating good returns for ourselves.
It must be very difficult for people. I mean, you know, clearly the pensions apartheid that exists between the public sector and the private sector is enormous. There must be, I'm thinking, Rebecca, a lot of people uh, retired, about to retire, who think they've made adequate provision for their pensions, but fine with the cost of living crisis, they're really struggling. Yeah, so clearly inflation has put up the cost of living for everybody. But if you're facing living on a, on a limited income, as pensioners are, it's an awful lot harder. And of course, if you're at retirement and you've seen the value of your pension fund decline, 10, 15 percent, as some of them have in uh, over 2022, then that's very scary, too, because you've got less um, to play with. Um, and so you've got, you know, you've got to make that money last. You don't know how long you're going to live for. That's very, very stressful. So, you know, returns are hugely important to retirement outcomes. What we invest in, although we might not feel like we have much control over it because it's all done for us by workplace pension providers, um, is really important to our retirement outcomes. So, you know, it, this policy, it, hopefully it will lift the lid a little bit on what our pensions are actually invested in already because it's actually mostly global equities, although, you know, some of that is the, the portion of that is reduced as people approach retirement to reduce the risk yeah. of people's values rising and falling. Um, but, you know, we do need to know a little bit more about what we're investing in um, because it does mean so much to us ultimately. And, you know, people don't retire on enough currently. Um, the, the Pensions and Lifetime Savings Association gives us guidelines on what we need for retirement. And most people are coming out with something that gives them just above a basic living standard in retirement at the moment. We want that to be a moderate, at least for most people. And we're very, very far away from that at the moment. Rebecca O'Connor. From Pension B, thank you very much indeed for joining me.